Hey, hey. Yeah. What are you drawing kicks at for? Don't be kicking it. Don't be kicking it. I'll draw a kick at you. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go to bed. Go to bed or not, you still have to go to bed. Does that make it sad? Mm, I, want to, I don't want to go to bed! This, this is Clark's fortress. Clark sleeps in a fortress because he's cool, aren't you? Look, watch. How cool is that? Oh uh, show him all your ties. Show him your friends. <laughs> They're your guns. Show them your friends. Yeah, they all go to bed. Then. Who's your favorite? Who's your favorite? Show me your favorite. Them three. Where'd you get him? Where'd you get him? Lapland. Lapland. And yeah, are we gonna go to bed now? Okay. Yeah, Clark's big bike was to bed on his own in his fortress. But I snuggle you for a minute, don't they? Yeah, because you'd be bold if you didn't do that, wouldn't you? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Listen, just clean the windows. The windows get cleaned every single day. It's all boredom. It's just bored. Every day. Every goddamn day. That's them windows are getting cleaned every goddamn day. Every goddamn day. Oh, yeah, good. Don't, don't forget the top. Oh, no, no. Give them a good clean, good clean, because they need it every goddamn day. <laughs> she is fair bored. You know what a word on the street is? Not only am I an essential worker, but I'm also the best father in the world and all that. You know, I stayed at home from my work today, even though it's essential to help my wife, and give her a hand, and give her a break. So I got up this morning and I played with the kids and did my bit. Had them their breakfast, made Vicky her breakfast, like oh my god. And then look, mind the baby here, it's not crying, it's breathing, it's happy. Well, I think it's happy. It's hard to know. Don't really give much back at that age. But anyway, look, look, look. Just look. I'm the best. This is the best television I've seen all night. Look at this lad. Oh, he knows how to shake. He means that shit. Oh, he's getting right into it. Go on. Oh, yeah. Shake and bake. Shake and bake. She looks like she's possessed. Look. Who's your man? Look good. Give it to it. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, put behind the head. And then the little snowy little Yeah, possessed. Look at this lad, look. He looks like he's filling the sock. <laughs> oh, this is fucking brilliant. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? There he is. Go on. Go on. Oh, yeah. Mmm. this. Oh, a little slow shake. A tiny little shake. They are getting it done. Look. Mmm. I don't know if they're the words. I'm not I'm not hundred percent certain if they're the words, buddy. Now, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. You ready? I go first and then when I die, it's your go. Okay? Why does that lad always look like he has a snot hanging over his nose? Look, a big snot. He does all the time. Do you see that before? Yeah, all the time. No way. He just needs to get his nostril hairs trimmed. Oh. Look at him. Coleman O'Sullivan, RT News, snot hanging over his nose, Dublin. Oh, <laughs> hello there. Didn't see you. You surprised me. You snuck up on me. We're in a private sale now in a uh, leash and it's, uh, it's like any sale we do, a thing of beauty. Oh, customer rings up and go, hey, oh, look, I want the best. You got it. You got it. Um, we're not here five minutes. We're not here five minutes. And, uh, Stone Cold Cowboys are here drawing the timber. Why? That's the way we get shit done. 
That is the way we get shit done. That's Ron in there now. Getting it done. And Ron in. No, Ronan's not a stone cold cowboy that long. He said he doesn't know himself since he became a sentient. David, the lorries are breathing down your neck. They're breathing down your neck. Do you feel the pressure? Do I fuck? <laughs> Give a fucking shite on more this fucking shite to me. Ronan's up to get now the lorry now and he's gonna waddle over to Greg and say, hey Greg, I don't care how big your fucking arms are if you don't move that piece of shit, I'm gonna kick seven shades of shit out of here. Well, thank God he eventually got to load his load with Greg in the way. Good old Ronan. As he's known in the business, the pussy pleaser. Please, Ronan would do it all day long. <laughs> Bye, Greg. Bye, fucking Greg. Greg knows that the pussy pleaser is out there waiting for another load of timber, and he's cutting me a, another few grabs of boxwood to top off that load. Cause we can't let the pussy pleaser down. Cause we're essential. Hold on to your dick and balls, Ronan. I'm coming to save the day. I am fucking coming. Not on my trousers now, but I'm just coming safe today. Nice area. You like it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, my friend, Cletus and I, we have a good old time. Comes around to my place and drinks some beers. And... Now, Cletus is a mischievous motherfucker. I'll be there, oh, Cletus! Don't be putting those big old balls in my face. Not right. God damn. Then he be jerking himself off. All over my fucking face. <laughs> Don't so be fucking up my snaps, bitch. <laughs> Greg, this is old bleak living, isn't it? We can't be on top of each other, hugging and kissing like we normally do, bonding like brothers. And we're eating sandwiches. Fucking rotten. I don't know. I don't know. Look, I'm enjoying this sauce in this. It's not very nice. I have room and you don't know how many and in my face. <laughs> You're a quant of a man. Greg, not the way the pipe went on you last night. And you had that little breakdown yesterday morning. Yeah. Night tightened the bar there this morning. I don't think them machines are respecting our social status as essential workers. Yeah, I am. I want to be working with you, wouldn't I? You got there? What have you got there? Oh, Greg, you read me. You oh, you read me mine, Greg. You read me mine. Here, you read me mine. You read my mind. Ow! Greg! Hey, hey, hey. Fucking dickhead! Right. Greg! You know I love you. And I'm your brother. So I'm gonna give you a heads up. I'm gonna give you a due warning now. You're giving me a heads up. I'm gonna give you a heads up. Gara is not too happy with you. Why? So you're, just, you're just not doing enough, Greg. Not pulling your way. Yeah, you're cutting timber. Yeah, you're sharpening your chains. Right, you're showing up. You're putting in a decent effort. But Garrett still has... Garrett still has to go off and get pipes. Organise a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You need to get your shit together. You need to have that sorted at the weekend. Now, Garrett needs to calm down. Garrett needs to calm down. He needs to chill out. You need to chill out a little bit too. Do you know how you do that? How? Fill the sock. You need to bump up them numbers. Fill the sock in the morning. Afternoon. Fill the sock again. Time to fill the sock because it's getting heavy the hour. I have to make time. Make time for it. Make time. Greg, did you hear the one about Mick and Bernie? No. Well, Mick was riding Bernie for married years. She couldn't orgasm. She was raging. She just always wanted to orgasm. So he went to the doctor and the doctor said, Look, it's too warm in the room. Just cool the room down and then you'll be able to orgasm. Mick was a main cunt, wouldn't put on the air conditioning. Not, not a chance. So he asked his friend Bill next door to come in and fan him. Well, he was pumping it into her. No difference. So he said, fuck this. We'll swap. We'll just swap around. So 
Bill rode the shite out of woman. She came four or five times. Oh, Jesus, she was delighted. So he gets up off her and he goes over to Mick and Mick hands him the fan and goes, there you go now. That's how you fucking fan a woman. <laughs> what do you think of that, Greg? That's good. Do you like it? Yeah. You fan the shite out of her. That's Garrett there doing big business. Doing big business on the phone. He just tipped down, so he did to me, and he says, uh, You know, David, you know, I know you're trying hard, but. You know, he was he was just at home tomorrow and crunching the numbers, and I just need to do a little bit more. Just a, just a little bit more. Yeah, you're up in the morning at 4 o'clock. Yeah, you don't get home at half 7, 8 o'clock. Just, just try and push it just a little bit harder. That's just the perfect kind of boss. That's the boss you need. That's the boss you want. That is the boss. What a guy. What a fucking guy. Oh God, lads, I am flat out all evening trying to get enough timber out for Barry. My brother Barry's two lorries. Uh, died down now, they're gone, but fuck, it's not easy. What you don't know is Barry has actually two diamonds to do. They look the very same, but they just have two different drivers. Now they're known affectionately in the industry as uh, the Pussy Patrol. I showed you Ronan yesterday, the Pussy Pleaser, but you didn't see Sean. Sean is known all over Ireland as the Pussy Punisher. You know? Every day, hauling logs, scraping ditches and fucking bitches. That's the way they roll. And they work great together. From morning to night. Ronan pleases that pussy. But then in the evening, at night time, sun goes down. Sean comes into his own. He punishes that pussy. But you know to help each other out if a pussy steps out of a line on Ronan and Sean has stepped in. And you know, it causes a lot of unnecessary problems for my brother Barry. For instance, if he's drawn out of a private sale and there's a lonely farmer's wife, can't send the lads there. Wreck a happy home. Women can't contain themselves. So Barry has to draw that himself drawn into a millway way bridge with a lot of ladies working in administration. No. Can't have a queue of lorries waiting to get up on the way bridge while you know what's happening. And it's just not proper that my brother Barry has to say to the guys during the week and at the weekend, you know, do your walk around checks, make sure your hours are right, and for God's sake you better be using jimmies! Only two weeks ago I went up to the truck yard and I watched Barry for an hour and 15 minutes pull brass, knickers and g-strings from the air breeder and the front grill of the two diamonds of doom. I got out and I said, Bar, Bar, what are you doing? He says, David, this is every weekend. Every we I haven't bought a rag since the pussy patrol started with me. I said, I don't know why you pop with it. He said, that's the tip of the iceberg. He says, the pussy pleasers lorry, I've put four new bunks in it this year. Four new bunks. Four. And the pussy punishers. 28 and they're not covered by warranty. I said, but why do you do it? It doesn't make sense. He says, I'll tell you why I do it. Because <sighs> you can't have no conscience in the hauling game. Plus, everyone's paid for it. It's all money in the bank for me. So, guys, I'm just letting you know if you see the two diamonds of doom rocking around the road, hold on to your women because the Pussy Patrol will do it all night long. Vicky wouldn't put bleach all over my uh, good t shirts around. Right? And she's washing them. And then blame me. Well, it is your fault. She'd be putting the laundry where it's meant to go. You told me to put the laundry in the laundry basket because you gave out to me for putting it on the floor. David, don't take that tone of voice to me. Why? You're lucky I don't give you a smack. <laughs>